Hey everybody, welcome out here. It's Chris Miles, anti-financial advisor and cash flow expert with Money Ripples here. Hey, I've got a special guest here, Warren Tarl, and, and I wanted to bring him on because the timing is perfect, right? Um, right now, everything that's going on, there's so many questions, so much misinformation, and not just the time out of the virus itself, even just about money in general and loans and you know what what can you what money can you access and what can't you and are there tax advantages or are there not you know and are there tax penalties and so before you file for 2019 you've got to watch this because Warren's got this stuff now a little bit about Warren Warren uh, one he's he's one of the top CPAs that I've ever met in the country he's actually down down in Scottsdale Arizona uh, he actually is used to work with guys like Tom Wheelwright if you've heard of him. Um, and just an incredible CPA, very creative. He's like an artist that happens to be a CPA. So, uh, so if you're looking for awesome stuff to do, definitely look up uh, Warren Tarl with Tarl Accounting for sure. If you can't tell what it is, look at his cap while you're listening to him. So, <laughs> so hey, Warren, thanks, thanks for, for joining me today. Thank you, Chris. And thanks for being my friend. I get a lot from you. <laughs> hey, when we're socially distancing, this is about the best we can do, you know? Right. <laughs> So, all right, well, tell us, like, I, I know you've been talking to bankers, like SBA uh, providers and things like that. So let's just kind of break this up in chunks of people we're talking to, right? So let's talk to those that are business owners right now that are uh, being affected uh, by what's going on with COVID-19 and everything else. What, what are some things that people should be aware of right now? Well, let's talk about the, some of the tax aspects of the CARES Act. That's the one that just yeah. passed last Friday, right? And yep. And I was warning people when I was seeing some of the drafts coming out to not file 2019's tax return yet if you haven't yet. And actually mm -hmm. there's some people out there who haven't filed 2018 yet, which is still a good idea not to do that just yet until we have a chance to talk. I, I actually stopped, I, I had gotten some e-file, some returns we had processed earlier and people sent it in their, their e-file authorizations and I, I stopped them because I spotted some stuff on the return that we need to fix now because of some of the changes. Yeah. And, there's, there's some aspects to this tax act that are retroactive to 2018. Mm -hmm. And those are actually pretty cool. So let's forget about all the worry and problems. It's kind of like about that good stuff that they just did for us. So yeah. when we got, when we got the, the Trump tax law passed, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of great breaks for business people and real estate investors and that whole thing. But to balance it out and to pay, to quote unquote, pay for it, right? They took some stuff away from us that was also pretty good. And now all of a sudden, because of this emergency, they went back and they're temporarily allowing some of the stuff they took away from us. So awesome. this is why I'm telling people not to file 2019 to listen to this part and then maybe talk to your tax people or better yet, talk to us and, and we can talk about it. So here's one of the main number one things, right? And it's mm -hmm. going to require you to remember how things used to be. So before the Trump tax law, I'll just call it that because that's what everybody refers it to. If you had a net operating loss, so in your, if, if on your personal tax return, if you ended up bottom line number was negative because maybe you had some losses from investments or businesses or whatever, and it got you to a negative number. Mm -hmm. In the olden days, we used to be able to take that amount and carry that loss back to two years ago you apply it there and then keep carrying it forward until we use it all up. And hmm. when we applied it to two years ago and then possibly even the, the prior year, we got a refund check because all of a sudden we reduced our taxes from two years ago and we got it like really right away. Uh, hmm. We didn't have to wait. And, but you could elect instead to carry that loss forward into the future. If you think your income's going up, it might have made to carry it forward. Under the Trump tax law, they took away the ability to carry it back. So you are no longer able to carry it back. We can only carry it forward. Mm -hmm. And when you carried it forward, they limited it to, you can only get rid of 80% of your next year's income. So mm -hmm. let's say your income was $100,000 and you had a $200,000 loss you were carrying forward. Mm -hmm. you, can only get, you can only get rid of $80,000 of that income. 20,000 are still gonna pay ta the tax on. Right, so the hundred thousand. There, there was right. a limit to it. Now you can still keep carrying the rest of that loss forward and keep using it up at eighty percent along the way. Hmm. That's all gone now. For 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 two thousand eighteen, nineteen, and twenty, like I said, it was reactive, retroactive. They got rid of that rule. We were back hmm. 
to rethink the old rules. They have, the IRS has been so busy with everything else, they haven't given guidance on exactly how this carryback is going to work. Are they going to bring back the old forms we got to use and, and, and carry it back two years, or do we only get to carry it back one year? But regardless, there's people out there who have losses this, that in 2019, we're still working on their tax returns, that those losses, they'd be much better off carrying them back to 17 or 18 than carrying it forward to the future where now most people's incomes are, are down and it's not going to be much of a benefit. Let's get that refund right away. So yeah. those people, we want to not file the return yet because hmm. we want to, we want to, you know, extend it, wait for the IRS to give us the rules and get that refund from the past. But, but just because you might say, hey, well, Warren, I didn't really have much of a loss or I wasn't really quite at a loss. As a tax preparer and as tax strategist, when we're working on 2019's tax returns, we know in our head that if we have a loss in 2019, we, under, the, under the new old rules, the old new <laughs> rules, whatever, we can only carry it forward and take 80%. So part of what we were doing when we're seeing that situation for clients is, we were it, where to the extent possible, we were limiting some of their deductions in 2019 that mm -hmm. we would be able to then roll into 20, into 2020 and then get a hundred percent of it instead of just 20% of it or 80% sure. of it. So our whole, so we have to go back now and look at it under the new rules and say, no, let's get all of that loss in 2019. So Mm -hmm. Even on that tax return, even though you might not show a loss or a very tiny one that you say it's not going to make a difference, it might be that your preparer, if it was us, was looking at that, considering what the new rules were, and now that they've changed again, we might do better. Yeah. Also, there's people who had losses in 2018. If you're, you had a net operating loss in 2018, that 2018 loss is now rolling forward into 2019 at mm -hmm. 80%. Because that's a rule, but we might be better off taking that loss and amending the 2018 return now and saying we want to carry 18 back, right? And get that refund right away. But then when we do 19, we really don't have that loss available to us, so we can't put. We shouldn't be putting on your return, or else we also have to amend the 2019 return, and you might end up owing money in 2019 because we moved that. So it. I know this is sounding really complicated. <laughs> and, and all, but it, it kind of it kind of is. Sometimes Congress can make these rules and just drop that hand grenade and let us all figure it out later. Uh, and that's kind of what we're doing. So that's that's thing number one. These net operating losses, we want to look at any client who's close to a loss or has a loss in 2019 or had one in 2018. Mm -hmm. Those guys definitely do not file right now. But give us give a chance to dust and settle and look at it with a clear mind what the best situation for you is going to be. Right. Also, another thing, they came out with a, a technical correction to the Trump law. So you, and I know you're really familiar, Chris, with bonus depreciation and, yeah. and all of that. So bonus depreciation was created by the, the, the new Trump law. It, it existed before, but it, it blew it up wildly where everybody can take advantage. It, it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in bonus depreciation, they said anything with a life of 15 years or less, we get to depreciate 100% right away. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a category of, of, of an asset uh, uh, call, called a qualified improvement property. So basically what qualified improvement property was, was that if you, it, it was basically leasehold improvement. So let's say your business is leasing a place and you build out that space or you do something to improve that, the, those leasehold improvements under, under normal rules, you would, they would have the 39-year life because mm -hmm. it's commercial property and they get a 39-year life. Several, several years ago before the Trump law, they created this special carve out for it that let you take that over 15 years, which was better than, than 39, but not as, you know, it's it, still not great. It's still not great. But then all of a sudden they added this new piece to it that says you can take bonus depreciation on anything 15 years or less. Well, they didn't renew that, uh, th that, that, that 15 year life for, for that improvement property that went back to after 2018 when the new law took effect, 
went back to being 39 years and we couldn't use that for bonus depreciation. Well, they hmm. came back and they called it a technical correction because they said they, it was an accident that they left it out. And then Congress could never agree on anything to get anything fixed. So mm -hmm. now that they're in this agreeable mode, they put that fix in there. And now as of 2018 forward, that 15 year property exists again. So we can mm -hmm. go back to, so if you did any kind of improvements, leasehold improvements from 2018 forward, that's another thing we can amend 2018 for and, and deduct right away or catch it in 2019 and take it now. Uh, 2020 is, is free, free for everybody. But uh, so that's another great thing. But, but also remember, if you took that in 2000, if you did it in 2018 and we amend 2018, that'll change 2019 because we're not going to have any depreciation for it in 19 because we would have taken it all in 18. So there's this ripple right. effect that goes through. Interesting. And what, what qualifies as an expense for that, that someone can claim there? Basically, it's, it's doing lease. It, it's when you do a, a build out for, on a lease, like our office space, like we're leasing mm -hmm. this office space here. <laughs> yeah. Show you around the cameras. But so we did, we, we, we spent, you know, the landlord usually gives you a certain budget that they'll go with and then anything right. over that you pay for. So we spent some decent money because we wanted to have a, a nice place to work out of. And mm -hmm. so that money that we spent to improve this office space would count restaurants you know when you do the build out for your restaurant that stuff counts the retail store you're, you're building you know you get the white box and and basically you build out everything else those things count great awesome well, what else changed what else changed so there's a few things that are okay they're not as 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 sexy i guess but uh, <laughs> Another thing that they added in the, in the new Trump law that wasn't so good is there was this thing called excessive business loss. Mm. And, and, and basically, if, if a married couple, what was it, 200, if, if you had a, a, a net overall loss from businesses of, of more than $250,000, uh, that loss, anything over that rolled forward to the next year. They didn't let you take all the loss in that one year. Right that they eliminate it for to, for 2020, 2018 and 20, and you know 2018 through 2020 that's now eliminated so if you had a big loss in 2018 mm -hmm. we can amend get that ref, get some more refund possibly or or actually the ripple effect you had that big loss in 18 we allow that whole loss to come through and now we can file to carry that loss back to previous years and get you that refund uh, so that's going to affect 18. It's going to affect 19 because now we're not carrying that loss forward into 19 anymore. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a bigger loss in 19, we get to take the whole thing. So that's a, a, another little ripple effect piece of all of this. Ah, fits with money ripples. Uh, <laughs> that's right. What's the other one? Uh, there was a couple weird ones. Uh, there was some alternative minimum tax credits that uh, went away uh, during under the tax act they they got rid of those very very i've never actually i haven't seen any of our clients get hit with that one and right. there's also an excessive business interest so hmm. congress put on a limit to how much interest deduction a a business could take but it was really only businesses that like ah, what was it over like 10 million dollars of revenue and Right. Some other things and didn't apply to, it didn't apply in most cases to mortgage interest, like people who are doing apartments and things like mm. that. It didn't really apply there to, oh, well, they, they waived that as well. So that, uh, that got a little better. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Uh, so those were, those were the main points that we really want to look at to, to say, if any of these things affect you or you think you're, they might just don't file 19 yet. Remember, mm -hmm. You have to July 15th. We can still do an extension in Ju up till July 15th to give us all the way to uh, October 15th. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, uh, so tell us like for those that, uh, cause I know a lot of people are getting refund checks right now or stimulus checks, I should say, not necessarily refund checks. Uh, they're getting stimulus checks right now, but there's a lot of people that don't qualify, especially a lot of my clients that don't qualify for that or, uh, or they're just, saying, hey, is there anything that I can do right now that can give me a break, whether they're a small business owner or even if they're a W-2 employee, is there something that they can do as well? So there's some very, 
So if you're a small business owner and you have employees and you're able to keep them working, there's some credits out there that are going to be available to you if your business was affected by Corona. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we can go into all those details, but it's only going to apply to a small sliver of, of, of probably the people who are listening right now because it's yeah. really for people who have employees. Uh, there's now mandatory sick paid sick leave for people suffering from Corona. Uh, right. And the interesting thing is even if you're, a, you're self-employed, let's say you're a sole proprietorship and you're the only person, you have no payroll, mm -hmm. you're, this, this credit applies to you as well. So if you have to self-quarantine or you have, you're diagnosed or anything like that, you get 10 days of sick pay up to uh, five, uh, your full amount of pay. I know this is weird when you're self-employed, right? We take your mm -hmm. net income and divide it up and all that, but you right. get up to up to $510 per day for up to 10 days of sick leave. Gotcha. And it, for businesses, you have to pay your employees that. You cannot mm -hmm. deny them. If they've worked for you for one day, they can be, they can be sick. And if you wow. deny them, this is what I was talking to you about, but the scary part, there's a, there's a really scary penalty. If, if you don't pay people their benefits that they earned under this new law, mm -hmm. the penalty is two times whatever the benefit you should have paid them, plus $10,000 and or six months in prison. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to see what's behind door number two. That's for right. sure. <laughs> so this is one thing. If you have employees, you got to take this very seriously. Yeah. And, and I beg people right now, because a lot of these things are going through payroll. Do not do your own payroll. Hire a payroll company. I'm even right. nervous about QuickBooks payroll, those kinds of things, because it's still mostly you driving it. You really want somebody that can advise you. Uh, a lot of the payroll companies are out there offering right now free uh, HR support to help people figure this stuff out. Definitely take advantage of using a real payroll service and not just an internet based thing. Oh, wise words. Yeah. Don't, tr don't trust your own uh, judgment on this, especially with everything changing. It's you need right. a professional that actually is keeping up with these changes. Money is one thing, but six months in prison. Uh, no. Now, now the department of labor said they, the, for the first 30 days, they're going mm -hmm. to be lenient and, but as long as people in good faith are trying to follow the law, they're going to let it go. Okay. But, uh, that, that's just a, a warning. Just So there's paid family leave or, or there's pay, paid sick, mandatory sick leave and there's mm -hmm. paid family leave that also is a requirement under this new law that the, the paid, the, the paid family leave it, of an employee does have to be with you for at least 30 days before they qualify for it. Okay. They get up to, uh, they get up to, what is it? 12 weeks of paid family leave time in which they get two thirds of their normal salary up to $200 per day. Wow. And you must give this to them the first 10 days. You don't, they're not, they're not paid. So that mm -hmm. first family leave part, they're not paid. But after that, they have to uh, pay you at least that two thirds and up to $200 a day. Now, as an employer for both of those paid things, the government will reimburse you for it. So don't freak out and say, how am I going to ever pay for it? You're going to have to come up and you, you don't even have to necessarily come up with the money up front. You have to come up with it for at least a quarter because when you file your quarterly payroll tax return, they'll give you a refundable credit on that tax return for what you paid for those things. And mm. so you'll get it back within that same quarter. Sure. It's another reason why you need to use a good payroll service because all the payroll forms that you're used to seeing right now, they all mm -hmm. have to be changed so they can fix for, uh, uh, allow for this credit. Right. Uh, wow. So, so that's good. Now, what I was saying though, sorry, I'm rambling, but we've been doing a lot of this stuff going on. These things are hitting us so fast and the changes keep coming. But uh, if you're self-employed, so again, you're a sole mm -hmm. proprietor, you don't have any other employees and mm -hmm. you're sick, you can't obviously pay yourself or whatever because it doesn't work that way. But on your 2020 tax return, you will get a credit on your 2020 uh, Form 1040 for these amounts that people with employees were getting on their quarterly payroll tax return. So, so in other words, you can get a credit up to uh, $5,110 if you were sick for 10 days with Corona, even though you're self-employed. 
So I have a right. feeling, I just have this feeling there's going to be a lot of clients that are sole proprietors that are, have, that quarantined themselves for 10 days in 2020 right. when it comes time to filing these tax returns. Yeah. And what's, uh, any changes on the real estate end of things? You know, anything that people can do now that they couldn't do before uh, if they're just buying real estate, whether they're a W-2 employee or whatnot? Real estate, there, there really hasn't been a lot of changes on real estate. Uh, mm -hmm. There's, so some, some breaks, they're not really through the tax code. Mm -hmm. But as, as you've probably heard, a lot of government agencies and officials are telling people, hey, you don't have to pay, don't pay your rent if you can't pay it. Right. And then you're the landlord going, well, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Right? You still got expenses. You're not allowed to evict anybody. There's a moratorium on evictions. There's a moratorium you know, you, you, you know, uh, on, on, on all that stuff. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's one of those things where you need to really work with your bank, with your mortgage, whoever provided your mortgages. Most, this is, again, I've heard this because I've worked with several banks and most banks will, will with hardly any questions asked right now, give mm -hmm. you a 90 day, deferral on any payments. They'll add it to the end of your loan, but they'll defer the right. interest in payments for 90 days. And if you talk to them, they're most of them are willing to go beyond that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now, so honestly, right now, banks can borrow money from the Fed for 0% interest. Right. So they're more than willing to help right now. Uh, yeah. Keep, to keep you as a paying client because it's not costing them anything. Uh, but you do need to call them and talk to them about it. Don't just right. stop paying because if you do that, you're in trouble. So yep. call them, tell them you're having some problems. And nine times out of 10, they're just going to let, they'll say, fine, rubber stamp it. They're not going to ask you a lot of questions and let you go. And if 90 days isn't enough, you know, talk to them again. They're, they are being, it, it, it's, it's weird to say, but banks are being humans right now. Right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So definitely, I mean, definitely don't, don't use that if you don't actually have any issues. Use that, of course, if people are right. need to work rent or they can't pay rent or they're paying a reduced amount of rent, that's the kind of situation where you can get that benefit. Right. That. Yeah. Let's not let, and, and it's going to be really tempting. And you know, there's with some of these programs out there because the government is not doing a lot of checking. They're doing a lot of rushing out of money. There's going to be a yes. lot of fraud out there and yep. don't think you can get away just because you got away with it right away. I don't think it's going to last. I think, There'll be a little vengeance. I think the government will come after people for later on once the dust settles, if you were taking advantage. I but agree. Taking advantage is wrong. Take advantage and do it the right way. Right. So, you know, yeah. don't, don't, don't get this pride thing about you and say, I'm going to suffer and, 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 and lose your business over this. Take advantage of the things that are out there. This wasn't your fault at all. There's nothing you really, you know, Mm -hmm. Most of these businesses, really nothing you could have done. To, you're, you're being forced to shut down in a lot of cases. Like yeah. Client that has operates uh, uh, stores and airports, you know, they're like, well, we're shut down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to end on this one because uh, this is this is kind of a big one I've noticed lately where um, talking about the 10% uh, early with penalty, right? The 10% withdrawal penalty you, right. can, you can get if you're not 59 and a half. Typically, there's only been three reasons you can access that, you know, for either first home, higher education or for uh, you know, massive, like destroyed finances, right? Where you're in desperation or medical or medical. Right. Exactly. But this is changing now. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. So it's and it's only, it's only through December. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, if you can say, and again, how do you, I don't know how this is proved, but if, yeah. if you take a distribution because you were negatively affected by the virus, and how's that defined? You, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> so I, I, I really think they're not going to come down hard on that. I mm -hmm. think I think we're going to see a kinder, gentler IRS over some of these things. Uh, but mm -hmm. so if, if you take that distribution, the IRS might just say we're not even going to get involved in that. If you took a distribution between February fifteenth and December thirty first, at the end of the year, yeah. we're going to assume that it was for this. And so they're, they're waiving, what was the limit? Uh, I lost that now up to as a hundred thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. You can take up to a hundred thousand dollars out of your retirement account. Mm -hmm. One, not pay that 10% penalty, which is good. But yeah. even better than that mm -hmm. is you, when you take that hundred thousand dollars out and aside from the penalty, 
that counts as income to you because because right. you, know, you, you never paid taxes on that, came out pre-tax. So it's income to you. They're now going to allow you to spread that income out mm -hmm. over three years. So you're going to pick up a third in, 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 in 2020, a third in 2021, and a third in 2022. Right. Uh, so we get to spread that out. But even, even better is the mm -hmm. borrowing that you're allowed to do now. Right. So in the past, you can borrow up to 50% of your, of, of your, of your retirement account balance mm -hmm. uh, with a limit of $50,000 and you right. had to pay that back within five years. So right. Like Sean, my, one of my other accounts, it's like, it's the five, five, five rule. But uh, <laughs> they've now changed it to where you can borrow up to a hundred thousand dollars out. Mm -hmm. And I believe they've waived the percentage of, of your account. So you borrow up to $100,000 out of your account and you still have the five years to pay it back. Yeah. Now, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let with, with the, uh, there, there's kind of a merging of these two rules, the mm -hmm. borrowing and the t just taking the distribution out and spreading it out over three years. Mm -hmm. So let's say you took out the $100,000 and yeah. year one, you picked up the third, you know, thirty-three thousand dollars of income mm -hmm. that you're supposed to do. Let's say year two, you don't want to pay taxes on it. You can pay back over that three-year period, even mm -hmm. though you didn't necessarily set it up as a loan. You can still pay back some of that money, and that changes right. the allocation of how much you have to pick up as income going forward. So, you know, for a lot of us, this is really a temporary thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you know. Uh, I don't want to jinx anything, right? But, but, but by, by the end of summer, maybe we're all kind of, that was an interesting thing and we're, mm -hmm. our businesses are back on track and we're, we're, we're running again. And we, we did, that money just got us by. So we're able to pay it back and, and, and not screw up our retirement planning necessarily. And don't want to pick that up as income in the future because my income is going right back up again. Right. So you can pay it back, which I thought was huge. And that was kind of more of a late thing that kind of got thrown in here at the end. And a lot of us didn't notice it when we were first reading everything. Yeah. yeah I heard the same thing. And, and I know a lot of my clients, because a lot of them aren't 59 and a half yet, although some of them are already over 60. But a lot of them are saying, hey, I, I want to get in a reason to access this cash so I can actually invest it on my own versus having it tied up in right. IRAs and 401ks where there's all these rules. And you know, if I can get it out now, especially when the tax code is already lower with the Trump tax plan, and I can now waive this 10% penalty, especially if they have been affected, right? Not, not just right. to commit fraud. I'm not saying that, right. but like, the, like I have a client who's, you know, he's losing about four to eight hours of work every week. And then his wife is also now homebound. They've sent her home and uh, she's kind of in between. She's wondering if she's going to get paid or not. So uh, I said, hey, for you guys, this is a legitimate reason. This is why they created it. You know, and what is so? What if you can? What if you can take that money out, mm -hmm. and structure it where we, you know, we'll, we'll I'll pay the tax over three years. Yeah, but I invested in something. Mm -hmm. That investment grows, so I'm able to pay back the principal that I took out over that three year period, and not recognize all of that as income because I've been actually putting it right back in. But I'm leaving sure. the profit out to keep growing. So if it's like a short-term lending type of deal or something like that, short-term investment, they can pull right back out and use again, right? Right. right. Like the like the good old days back when people were there was like interest rates were higher and people were there's bigger necessary returns out there. There mm -hmm. used to be a strategy with people who had uh, 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 retirement plan. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, like uh, dang, I'm losing the term. Uh, <laughs> like a simple plan or a Keo plan, those kinds mm -hmm. of retirement plans in, in their sole proprietorship, that one of the ideas was fund it to the max in January, right? Uh -huh. even, though you're, you're, even though your business might not have enough income to justify you putting in the max, mm -hmm. by the end of the year, when you see what your income is, take the extra back out again mm -hmm. because you weren't allowed to do that in the first place, but it's okay as long as you settled up by the end of the year. Then, but all the growth that you made from January through December got to right. stay in. Right. Yep. You were able to leverage it essentially, almost right. like borrowing, but you're just borrowing your own cash. Right. So that's you know yeah. that that that's that's an interesting uh, uh, strategy out there. I think. Absolutely.
One, great war. One, one, one more thing, if you don't mind, on yeah. the same subject, because you brought it, is, is uh, RMDs, uh, required minimum distributions. Right. So those are waived for 2020. So you do not have to take money. If you're old enough with 71 and a half, you don't have to take the money out of your retirement account mm -hmm. this year. It, it's waived. Right. So don't. And that reminds me of another thing too. Stretch IRAs are gone now, or at least right. the way they were before. You know, stretch IRA, which was causing, even before any of this happened, it was a huge surge I was seeing in people mm -hmm. wanting to do Roth conversions because right. without being able to stretch, you were really putting your your heirs at some significant disadvantage. Yeah. And so Roth conversions were already on the rise. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, again, if you're invested in the market and it's gone down, you really need to consider those Roths. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if you've already lost money, hey, there you go. <laughs> Get it while you can, you know? Right. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, Warren. Uh, of course, if people want to reach out to you, what, what's the best site they can go to to contact you guys? Well, uh, interesting timing. We're, we're, we're working. And when all this hit, we were in the middle of relaunching our website. So, uh -huh. so uh, tacpas.com is our website. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, by the end of this week, we'll have the new one up, and we're going to have a, a page dedicated to uh, COVID-19 related relief and information that'll be on there. But really the best place to go is the Tarl Accounting Facebook page. That's where we're mm. getting the most breaking information because we can get it out the fastest that way. Uh, and then everything else catches up to it. So go, if you go out to Facebook and like, just look up Tarl Accounting, easy to find. And, uh, and just like that page, and we're putting stuff up there on a regular basis. We're also doing every Wednesday, and you can get this information from the Facebook page or the website, a, uh, a Q and A call every Wednesday evening right. at 4:30 uh, that you can jump on, and, and we'll try our best to answer answer your questions. And uh, yeah, last night we went almost two hours, and we're trying to keep it to an hour, but it was our first one, uh, yep. so uh, so that's there for you guys too. Great, appreciate it, Warren, and uh, everybody else reach out. You know, if you got questions, obviously, you know, you're, every situation is different. So definitely check it out and uh, check out his Facebook page, Tarl Accounting. So, all right, guys, you have a wonderful day. We'll see you. Thanks, Warren. Thanks, Chris.